Good day and welcome to another segment on the bench. Today I'm going to bring you up one of my special flies. It's got a special little name to it. I call it Dirty Harry. It's a fly that just gets the job done. You can see it's got so many attributes to it that make it a great pattern and uh, you can use this on any species you want, different sizes. It's a compilation of uh, just some new materials that I've put on uh, basically my enticer fly that has been so good over the years. So let's get to the bench and tie one up. Well folks, let's get the materials we need to tie the Dirty Harry. You're going to be using a Daiichi 1530 size 6 or 8. I'm going to be using a medium hot pink bead on this one. Also going to be using some fluorescent ice dub, this fluorescent hot pink. I'll be using some cross-cut rabbit strips for the tail and the collar. Also going to be using for the body, we're going to be using some dirty bug yarn. Mottled golden olive, some extra fine wire, help with the color, a little bit of our wax, and some six sawed hot pink thread, classic wax thread. A great little pattern. It's really easy to tie. Fish like to uh, eat it. Just part of my enticer series. Uh, just doing it a little different uh, steps on it. We're going to uh, go underneath the tail with just a little bit of this ice tub just for a little bit of a little strike trigger back there. The uh, enticer series I always had the um, bodies done in ice tub, total in ice tub and then I had just the natural hair for the tail and the collar. So just doing this little Variation of that. Ice stub really works nice. This this is a fly that really breathes well. You can see with all the rabbit in there. I'm making sure I'm grabbing these nice markings of the tips. That's what I'm looking for on this fly. Okay, now I'll bring in my uh, butt yarn. And we'll get that on the on the body here for him. After I pick it up off the floor. <laughs> you get the camera out and there's all kinds of stupid things happen when you're filming. I'm coming right to the rear here just above the point of the barb. Now I'll just... I don't rehearse my videos too much. You can see I just kind of cut them raw. <laughs> you guys... You know how fly tying or anything goes, you always make a few little errors here and there, and that's part of it. And I'll just cut my, uh, catch my wire in there, make sure I t take the end over, bit, tie over the, fold the wire over itself so it doesn't pull out. It's nice and strong. And then I'll bring in my dubbing table for the Norvice guys, you know what that's all about. If not, you can go to people that are using standard vices, go to a dubbing loop or you can go to dubbing blocks. Okay, let's get some of this uh, cross-cut rabbit here. And I like it coming off the side of the hide like that. I cut my hide off because I can get more hair on there without turning the hide on. I'm going to cut it a little shorter. I don't want the collar to be overtaking the pattern. I'm just, then I'll take a little bit of my Ice dub on there. Don't want too much. Just get that so it's kind of peeking through a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more hair on the front. I don't like to overdress this pattern too much. But you get the tips kind of black in there. Those tips really add a lot to it. You'll see that's going to look pretty good. Now I'll grab some of my dubbing wax, put that over top of the uh, wire, get that hold, hold your materials, all your, especially if it's hair will fall out. If you don't have the wax in there, I'll end up dropping that on the floor for a while. So that wax really helps a lot. I'll just grab a dubbing picker here just to kind of brush that out a little bit, get that Get that ice dump kind of peeking through the bottom. That's got to be seen. It's 
kind of in the background a little bit. It's underneath. Now if I got more hair than I want, I can just tie it off. So that'd be a lighter, nice light color collar on it. And put a little head cement on there and Bob's your uncle. And it's a great little fly. Kind of a nymph or a wet fly, whatever you want to call it, but it damn sure works uh, for all kinds of species of salmon and trout. We've been using these for years, they've been very effective. It's a fly that's very underrated in my books. We use it a lot, and it doesn't gain any flavor because it just it, it's so simple, it looks uh. <laughs> Everybody looks past it. They like all these bells and whistles on them nowadays. But with a little bit of ice stub on there, just got the right amount, just kind of catches their attention and a lot of movement. It's it's a fly you can fish in any zone if you want to fish rivers, streams, lakes, anywhere you go. Uh, I don't know. It's just been been a great fly for us. So we thank you for uh, tuning in today on Sport Fishing on a Fly, and we'll catch you again real soon.